Hey everyone, I'm Castle Buddy. Today I'm going to be another, doing another one command block video, and in this episode I'll be do all my creation is end game mode in one command block. So if you want to grab yourself a command block, first you have to do slash d i v tab space tab space tab c o m m tab enter. As you can see, I have a command block in my hand. Just Grab yourself a button or a block of redstone, either one works, but if you're using a button, it can be placed on any side except the top. If you place it, hold on a second. You can copy the command that's in the comment section, well, it will be in the comment section, then paste it into the, this command block, power it, and as you can see, you get this message and game mode by Castle Buddy, Furnace Pet suggested by Nyla Molki, Creeper Pet suggested by Bowie, it's 099. Do not claim this module as your own. Made using Mr. Gretto's command combiner. Have a nice day. Info Characters 18,141. Inventory Pets 3. Lag Sum. So, first off, if you want to begin your adventure, you're gonna need to kill a zombie. I have myself a diamond sword that does 126 attack damage and has looting 126. Also there's a couple of, well there's a lot of different monsters that have been affected by this command and I'll bring them out right now. By the way I won't have enough to fit up, fill up my entire inventory so I'm gonna have to put some away as I go along. So I've got the Guardian, the Blaze, the Zombie Pigman, of course, the Zombie. Then I've got the Creeper. Hmm. The Ghast. What else? The Spider. The Enderman. And the Endermites. That should just about do. So first off, like I said, if you want to begin in your in if you want to begin your adventure, you're gonna have to find a zombie and defeat him. And you'll get this item that says "End Game Merchant." By the way, the villager has to be named "End Game Merchant," and it has. To, otherwise, let me show you. So I've got this villager over here, just plain white. As you can wait, can't trade with it. Him. So as you can see, he's a leather worker. But if I get the end game merchant, you'll see I get this end game merchant. So if you want to, well, he makes a few different trades. Some of and one of them requires a mob drop. Not the Enderman, the Endermite. Defeat the Endermite. One, two, three, four, and five. Just remember that this has looting 126, meaning that you won't get these drops right away. And all of them. If you do, then you're really lucky. Oh wait, I already have the spider spawn egg. So as you can see, I've got the spider here. If I defeat it, then I'll get a spider head and a bunch of string. I'm gonna be needing that string for later on. Hmm, I see you falling down here. So if I go in here, ender exoskeleton. I'm gonna need these ender shells. By the way, you cannot just rename them, they have to have the smooth and milky description, meaning you can only get them from Endermites. As you can see, the Ender Exoskeleton looks like this. It pro and, the and it provides Protection 10, Fire Protection 10, Projectile Protection 10, and Unbreaking 10. Now it's time to move on to some of the other trades. I'm gonna put this stuff away. So first off, I'm gonna need blaze rods. Next up, I'm gonna need obsidian. I'm also going to need 
diamonds. You're gonna need a fishing rod for the first trade. What else? Hmm. Iron ingots. A lava bucket. I'm trying to think. Let me. So, first off, well, the first trade ultimate rod. It has unbreaking 10, luck of the Z10, and lower 10. Now I've got the night helmet. Oh, wait, that's what I was missing. Gold ingots. Because there's the gold over here. That's a lava bucket. And the diamond for the front of the helm. Oh, yeah. Flint and steel. And oak wood planks. So, smoke leggings. Gonna need flint and steel and oak wood logs planks to create smoke leggings protection 10 fire protection 10 blast protection 10 and thorns 10 10 attack damage and plus 200 percent speed if i equip them as you can see by the way if you're wondering about all the holes it's because of one of the future items i'm gonna show it later on in this video so as you can see you can run around pretty fast but there's more also the end game merchant likes to run so i'm going to need for obsidian and a lava bucket to make lava walkers they have protection 10 fire protection 10 feather falling 10 thorns 2 and depth strider 10 if i put those on by the way i forgot how to show you how the smoke leggings look they're right below my under exoskeleton, and at the bottom my my red shoes, well, red orange shoes, those are the lava walkers. And let me show you what their special ability is. As you can see, I can run around really quick in the water, well, swim and run. And I can go just as fast on land, maybe even faster. So as you can see, this is a pretty good set of armor, though it is quite expensive. So I've got the endgame merchant. And first off, I'm going to need blaze rods and obsidian for the veil sword, the veil pick, the veil axe, the veil scythe, the veil shovel, and oh, he also sells some other items, like this projectile protection 10 chest plate. It's kind of random. I, as in, it's a random thing. I'm not sure if all endgame merchants are going to have those same trades. But I do know that for a fact that the same trades are the ones that I just made. As you can see, there's the night helmet, 6 max health, 3 hearts, 2 plus 2 knockback resistance, and 5 attack damage. This is how the full suit of armor looks like. But wait, there's more! Remember how I got all those spawn eggs? Well, now it's time to show you what they do. First off, the hard guardian. If I defeat it, I get a few different items. I've got the mini elder guardian, which is placeable, as you can see here. And I'm gonna have to stow away some of my items in a chest. Hold on a second. Just gonna grab myself a chest. I'm gonna put in all of this, this. I already spawned in the Endermite. Did this. villager I already showed you 
the mini elder guardian now it's time for the spider head you can place it down just like a normal mob head but as you can see there's the puffer pet puff like a fish the first inventory pet as you can see when immediately when you wear it you gain poison 3 and water breathing 10 so now you might be wondering, well, why would I equip this inventory pet if it poisons me? Well, let me show you. So if I walk around here, you know what, I'll use it for the next monster. Nah, not the Enderman, he'll run away. So as you can see, there's the creeper here. Huh. This was working a moment ago anyway. I'll have that fixed when this comes out, which is today. As you can see, I just got the Creeper Pet. Grants a short moment of invincibility when near explosives. So I can explode like that. And also if I go into survival, you'll see that Boom! I take no damage. So that's how the creeper pet works. And once again, the puffer pet was supposed to apply poison to all enemies and players near you. I think it's just a simple problem. So next up, I've got the zombie pigman. As you can see, he's holding this enchanted sword. Oh, there's a desert temple over there. So, if I defeat the zombie pigman, I get this new sword, the Nether's Flame, Fire Aspect 10, and Unbreaking 10. And I'll show it, and I'll show you how it works on this skeleton with an enchanted bow. But I'm gonna need my looting sword in order to get it. And as you can see, I got the Zapper. Unbreaking 10, Power 10, and Flame 10. And I'm going to show it to you on this skeleton. Ready, set. By the way, I would just like to let you know that all monster, that almost all monsters in here now have increased health and attack damage as well as increased follow range. So you'll want to watch out for that. While I'm here, I'm going to show you what the Endermen have to show. <coughs> As you can see, it has significantly, it has a significant amount of health now. It's increased by a lot. Once again, I have to show you, well, I have to show you that again since I didn't get the drop. Enderman, but I'm pretty sure you could catch a glimpse of it. Anyway, I'll show it to you when it drops. And there it is, the Enderman head, just like the spider head, but of an Enderman. And if I put, and I have to deposit more stuff in a chest, and game merchant, this, 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 and this. Now it's time to continue to the next enemy. The Blaze. As you can see, the Blaze has more health and the Furnace Pet cooks all ores in your inventory. So if I put it in here, as you can see, I get this little furnace. But wait, the Furnace Pet block is locked. You can only open it if you have the Furnace Pet in your hand. And as you can see, you can cook stuff. And when you don't want it, you can just put this away and break it. So that's the blaze. Now it's time to show you the ghast. It's also gotten way more health. As you can see, I should have defeated it by now, but I haven't. And its drops are down there. 
But the main thing I'm looking for is the mini ghast, placeable. As you can see, I have a little ghast trophy. And I'm trying to see if I've missed something. Pretty sure there's this thing, the cave spider. Oh, there it is. So, as you can see, there's another item, the cave spider head. Pretty cool. And there's one last thing I have to show you, but it's quite destructive. Slash summon. Hold on a second, but not the mushroom cow. As you can see, the wither has now become the hard mode wither. And I must take it out. I would highly recommend some of the new items. Also, the wither now has 600 health as opposed to the normal 300. Which should mean it now has 300 hearts. Pretty tough, right? So, if I can fly around and defeat it. Like I said, this is quite destructive. It's really hard to defeat him, as you can see. So I would so I would recommend trapping it somehow. By the way, the wither can break obsidian. In case if you didn't know, obsidian can actually be blown up. It's just really hard. So I almost have it down to a point. There it is, where I can defeat it easily. So as you can see, the wither has gotten to below half its health, in which it turns into the enraged wither. Once again, I have to defeat it. It's just like a normal wither boss fight, but with increased health and damage. And it's, of course, the same. It has the same destructive potential as before, just it has higher health, so it lasts longer, wrecking the terrain further. I've almost got it down. Oh, oh. <laughs> the wither's breaking water. That's quite the that's quite the explosion you got there, huh? So I defeated it. Let me just make sure I have enough room. Okay, I do. Time to pick up its straw. As you can see, I, we, once you defeat it, you get two nether stars as opposed to the normal one, since of course it's harder, and you get three wither heads. They're trophies, so you can just place them down. Don't worry, they won't actually spawn in the wither again if you place them in the normal... Well, let me show you. Soul sand. And if I place the wither heads, they won't actually spawn it in, they're just trophies. So you can create your own little wither statues with with, their, with actual wither skulls on it. It's pretty cool. So I figured that I may as well show you the ultimate rod and how it works. So I just toss it down. Gonna get a little closer. Wait for a fish to find the line and bite it. Well, this is taking a while. I guess I'll try to cast it somewhere over here. Yeah, that looks a bit bugged. A floating fishing rod, who knew? Anyway, so it's basically just a fishing rod with all these cool enchantments. 
The Veil Sword, it has 10 attack damage and it's unbreakable. Just 10 attack damage, no enchantments, no nothing. The Veil Pickaxe, I may as well show you the Veil Tool Set. They all have unbreakable, except for the Scythe. But if I go into survival, I can show you what they do. As you can see, I mine pretty fast with this. With, with the pickaxe, stone stands no chance. Which should make mining pretty easy. Now I'm going now I'm going to go into the forest biome. Whoa. And show you the axe. Of course, I can't show it to you in creative mode since it instantly breaks everything in just the click of a mouse. So if I go in here, as you can see, I chop down wood extremely quick. So yeah, oh yeah, I also want to show you the zapper in survival mode, if I have any arrows, which I'm probably going to have to go get, but that's no problem since I've got smoke leggings, which increase my movement speed by quite a bit. In fact, I think it doubles it. So as you can see, I run around here, try to find my arrows and find something to defeat. And I may as well show you how to survive your first night. Actually, maybe not. Because really, the gear you have when you enter your first night with this varies. But my intention is for you to have end game gear since, well, hence the name end game mode. That's why everything is so difficult. So, just going to do. There. I just ran a command that makes it so that I. So that I fill up my hunger bar. So, I may as well show you the creeper. And it's explosion. Boom. You have quite a long time though. Anyway. So the blaze. Bam. Defeated it in one hit with the zapper. Pretty good bow, huh? As you can see, I got another furnace bet. By the way, this is just a failed att attempt at making the furnace bet. So finally, if you're tired of having all this end game mode stuff, all you have to do is run up here and act and well. The same way that you would place this block of obsidian, you just interact with the sign and delete, delete, delete. So that concludes it for this contraption. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'll see you all in another episode.